Welcome to Electron Online and now let's take a closer look at electron degeneracy because understanding electron degeneracy helps us understand why dwarves and why white dwarves eventually cause supernova explosions. So what is electron degeneracy? Well, in order to understand that, let's go back to a simple atom. Let's say we have an atom that has a nucleus and a boundary of the atom defined by the electron orbits. So there's orbitals and cause electrons to exist around the nucleus of an atom and typically the diameter of the nucleus is very very small around the neighborhood of 1 times 10 to the minus 15 meters which is 0.001 picometers now the diameter of a typical atom is about 100 picometers or about 1 angstrom so when you relate the diameter of an atom to the diameter of a nucleus of an atom you realize that when you start stacking up atoms that the nuclei are about a hundred thousand times the diameter of the nuclei apart from one another. So when you stack up material in matter that you find anywhere in the universe on the earth except for special places like white dwarfs, the typical distance between the nuclei is about a hundred thousand times the distance of the nuclei diameters themselves. So there's this enormous ratio between the size of the nuclei and the size of the atoms. So now what happens is, and actually the number is a little bit bigger than that, but that's a good estimate right there. So what happens is normally the nuclei I have all the positive charges in the terms of protons and neutrons. They're stacked up together very densely within the nucleus. And then we have the electrons existing around it in orbitals. And those orbitals are defined by quantum mechanical equations like the wave equation, the Schrodinger equation, which when we calculate them, we know the shapes of where these electrons are at the typical probability level. So what happens when you take material like white dwarf material and you squish it together much, much denser than normal material on the Earth, which is what happens with white dwarfs? What happens then is the distance between them is squeezed somewhere from 100,000 times the diameter of a nuclei between each nuclei to about 1,000 times the nuclear, the nuclear diameter. Now you say, well, 1,000 times is still a lot, but 1,000 compared to 100,000 is a very small amount. It's only about 1% the distance that we were at before. So they're much more tightly packed together. And so what happens to those electrons that normally take up all that space? Well, they're now being squeezed down tremendously into much smaller volume so it affects the shape of these orbitals they get squished and pushed and pushed and the electrons are closer together they tend to repel each other more strongly and so there tends to be this repulsive force keeping the material from getting any any more dense so normally at the cores of stars which are also enormously dense not quite as dense as white dwarfs but still enormously dense there's this delicate balance between the force of gravity trying to push the nucleus together and the thermal pressures of the caused by the radiation, the radiation pressure and the thermal pressure, the enormous heat generated in the nucleus pushes back against gravity and it forms a nice balance. That's why the core of stars are much larger than a white dwarf. That's because white dwarfs are much more dense than the typical cores of stars when they're, when they're fusing nuclear material from hydrogen to helium and helium to carbon. So we have this extremely dense material that normally, because the lack of temperature, even though it's very, very hot at the center of these white dwarfs, they're not nearly as hot as when they're producing nuclear fusion. And so therefore, normally gravity would be much stronger and push the nucleus of these white dwarfs closer and closer together, much more dense together. But somehow, this repulsive force of the electrons, something we call electron degeneracy pressure, is keeping the nucleus or the white dwarfs from collapsing any further. So the balance is kept not by the thermal energy inside the white dwarfs, but by electron degeneracy. It's not exactly the repulsive forces between the electrons, because that's not really what produces the electron degeneracy pressure. What's really going on there is that electrons are bound by nature to exist in certain orbitals in certain energy levels based upon the Pauli exclusion principle. You can't just dump an infinite number of electrons, it even a non-infinite number, let's say five or ten electrons in the same energy level, in the same orbital, it just can't happen. We've discovered that in nature you can't stuff more than two electrons in a particular orbital, one that spin up and one that spin down. If you try to push two of them into the same orbital that are both spin up, they will simply not want to be together in the same orbital. So it is this refusal of electrons to occupy orbitals in great quantities 
they're limited to two per orbital, that causes the electrons to have to push out and make space for themselves to exist in these additional orbitals. Since electrons are there, they have to exist somewhere, and they push back by wanting to be in these orbitals, and that's what we call the electron degeneracy pressure. That prevents the white dwarf from collapsing any further. But we already noticed that the more mass white dwarfs have, the tighter and the more dense they become. And as they become more dense, the gravi gravitational forces keep on increasing. And eventually, we surmise that there must be a limit as to when we exceed that limit, when we exceed the mass limit of white dwarfs, the electron degeneracy pressure can no longer hold back gravity and the star will collapse. And Chandraskar had calculated that this was about 5.7 times the, so the mass of the sun divided by mu sub electron squared, which is 2 squared or 4. If you take 5.7 divided by 4, you get about 1.4 times the mass of the sun. Now, this is an extremely simplistic equation. Calculating that was much more complex, and we had to keep in mind that as the white dwarfs were packed tighter and tighter together, the speed at which the electrons moved within that white dwarf would increase and eventually gain relativistic speeds. And because it gained relativistic speeds, it increased the degenerative pressure, but only to a limit because it also caused the mass to decrease down to the point where it could actually begin to collapse. If it wasn't for the fact that electrons moved at the relativistic speeds, the, the size of the white dwarfs would fairly well maintain a size where the electron degeneracy could hold back the gravitational pressure, but that's not the case in reality. The equation, of course, is a lot more complicated than this, and at some point I may show you how that's calculated, but here it suffices to realize that eventually, if the mass of white dwarf exceeded a certain amount, which is about 1.4 times the mass of the sun, the electron degeneracy pressure could no longer hold back against gravity. And at that point, something begins to happen inside the white dwarf, and a supernova explosion of the type 1a would then ensue. So, if you're still interested, keep watching. We have more information for you in the next videos.